Okay, here's the sun ray. I'm getting ready now, finally. This is September. Um, I haven't worked on this since the winter, since February or so. Uh, during February, I did the transom from the inside. You'll see that in a moment. I also shaped the stringers and put a couple coats of epoxy on them. Right now, they are uh, shaped and leveled uh, pretty good, and they're just temporarily held in place by those uh, braces. If I kick the thing, they would fall over. Uh, but there's the transom in the back that's been replaced. I'll be putting them with a uh, thickened mixture, and I'll probably put some quarter-inch fiber into it and do a generous fillet in the bottom of each of these so that I can glass. And I, in some areas, I took too much off. I'll probably use some thin shims of PVC from PVC Lumber and tuck them in. It's compatible with epoxy, just to, to gap fill a little bit. Here are the stringers ready to sand. And I've got a variety of sanding tools here. And here's what I've done with the uh, center keel portion. It had two coats also, and I've just used a random orbit sander and uh, sanded it, and it's ready to go. And this is the edge. It will be puttied into the hole. Okay, this boat I last touched about six months ago, so I thought I would freshen it up, uh, just clean it and then vacuum it. Uh, this five inch orbital disc has had it. This is a paint stripper disc, it was kind of old, but uh, it helps freshen up the fiberglass, get any dirt out and uh, degloss any areas that I missed. I also uh, had a few little rads and corners where I use the silicone carbide um, it's like scotch bright, but it's a silicon carbide equivalent to uh, steel wool. So I use that to clean up, and then I, of course, I vacuumed. And the next step now is to uh, degrease and clean. So I have some acetone in my non approved container and uh, a bunch of rags. I cut up this shirt, and you may recognize it from uh, uh, the video on the Trent Severn Canal. I wore that last summer. So. I had to sacrifice a few shirts, and then this is one of them. So I will get to it and just wipe all the areas where I'm going to be putting in the stringers. Uh, that's pretty much uh, where I'm going to limit myself to at the moment. And so just like so. And it's pretty wide open here. I've got the barn doors open, so uh, I shouldn't faint or anything. Just give a wipe, turn the rag. And I'm getting off some of the dust and any grease. to set the level for the floor and that will raise in some cases raise the stringers off the floor The stringers are lying in place. I used some wet epoxy with a little bit of thickener in it just so it would stay. It's a slow epoxy. I've uh, just wet out the bottom of each stringer and also the hull immediately below it. And you can see in the back there a little bit of white. That is some uh, PVC lumber. Uh, it's this stuff here. It's compatible with epoxy. I use that for gap filler a little bit. Uh, and it will be filleted and filled, packed, and then of course it will be glassed after if the glass will give the strength. Um, what I'm using for a filleting compound 
I've mixed this. It's stiffer, I guess like a very stiff mashed potato, but very gummy. What is in it? That right there is 400 grams. Actually, it's uh, 404 grams of uh, uh, resin with 186 grams of hardener. That was my previous batch for wetting down. I used to 146 total. But anyhow, that's what's in there. That's uh, 590 grams. So that's over, uh, that's a fair bit anyhow. It's over a pound. Uh, what I put in it is, uh, this is the aerosol cabasil. To that amount, I added uh, four of these in as a thickener. Uh, a little bit of strength too, I suppose. But the real thing is for some hardness, for some binding and strength, I put in uh, one of these cups of milled, milled fiber. This is my recipe. And I put in one of these here, totally full of uh, quarter inch fiber. So that's going to be, give it some structural strength. The glass will be laid over that. Okay, I'm not sure what time it is. I started maybe about three o'clock, four o'clock actually, and uh, really in earnest. And I mixed up lots and lots of epoxy. I don't know if you can see here. That's uh, a little better here in the light. You can see along here, uh, filleting. It's sagging a little bit, and I, that's partly because I had, went on this board on top of the stringers and uh, tended to bounce and squeeze out a little bit here and there. Oh, let's just go add up how much epoxy I had to mix up. Oh boy, this is a real scrawl. My first uh, little batch, I did uh, some wetting. Uh, this is how much resin, this is how much hardener. So 146 total. There's uh, 590, this is grams, 590 grams, quite a bit. That's several pounds of epoxy, and that's, of course, mixed with the aerosol and a little bit of milled fiber and uh, some quarter-inch chopped uh, fiberglass. Um, it's still very slightly tacky. It's a slow epoxy. We've had cooler weather evenings in the mid-50s, and uh, during the day it's around 65. Um, this morning, this morning would have been an ideal time. It was still pretty tacky and everything, but I got a call this morning that the Mercury motor was ready to pick up at the dealer. They had some success with it. That's the motor that was originally on this boat that I bought the boat for. Well, the boat was free, but the motor was for the Hobo House boat. Anyhow, so I'm a little delayed getting at it, uh, but it's still a little bit tacky. Yeah, it's very, you can hear, I don't know if you can hear that, but my pants are sticking to the uh, stringers and my pants are right now sort of soaked. All my clothes, uh, I just have the same clothes on I had last night, old stuff. Little jigs I had across the stringers, don't mind the noise. Uh, you can, s oops. You can see up here there's a fair gap right there that I know I have to do secondary oops secondary filling right there and it's oozed out right here I have some reasonable fillets I need to actually that's rough I will need to scrape that down a bit uh, some areas on this side it's hard for you to see but I need to fill in a little more there that right there is a generous Fill it right up from there. There is the bond that you can see diagonal bond. Uh, I've got that filled. That'll have to be sanded after to uh, smooth it out before I glass that joint. So that's all pretty good. There are some areas. Uh, that side's not bad either. Um, there are some areas here. The filleting is good up to somewhat. Well, actually it's undercut there. So I'll need to add fill it there. Uh, some areas it puddled out. There's actually a ridge there, significant ridge. Um, but you can see all that. It's like a lake that has uh, flowed out. Uh, we'll have to take care of that. So, um, just one thing that you know here. There's some plastic. It's not really straws. I don't know what it's from, but there's some plastic tubular material. 
I glassed in place, I had notched the end of those two stringers and I put the tube in place just so I could uh, uh, epoxy over it. I will cut those down flush, but that is for drainage from, for the outer channel here. Okay, it'll drain at the back into the uh, bilge area there. From previous videos, you know, one thing I really like, it's just fun, is when you clean out your old container. In this case, I need the uh, squeegee thing there. It just all pulls out. This is mostly cured. It's still a little gummy, but it comes out. So the inside of that container is completely smooth, just like when I started. There's nothing in there. Oh, there's a little bit right there. It didn't come. I get with my thumbnail. Just like gum. It's easier to remove in the gum state now than later to sand it. So, flush cutter. Watch out for the noise here. I've already been picking away at this.